All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and today, today I've just got a couple of really interesting things to show you. A little bit of posturing for retail, which I want to go over, and then I want to get into the charts because I think it's finally time. I think it's finally time to put some longs on. We've been very, very patient. We've been waiting for this cycle low to show up, and not just show up, but to confirm in Bitcoin. I really think we're there. I think we're there. I think we can take a stab. Obviously, we have to manage risk. As always, we'll have to use stop losses. But I think if Bitcoin can just gain a couple more hundred dollars per coin, then it will have at least convinced me that it has confirmed the cycle low. It's made its reversal and it is going to begin its next 60 day cycle to the upside. First of all, entities that are holding between 0.01 to one Bitcoin have been smashing the buy button every single time there's been a dip over the past year. This week has been no exceptions. And you can see down the bottom, retail continue to buy the dip. They continue to accumulate Bitcoin every time the price pulls back. At the same time, we have just surpassed 1 million whole coiner addresses. So there are now over 1 million people holding at least one full Bitcoin. Again, you can see at the bottom here in the orange up and to the right, this shows increasing spot demand for Bitcoin. Over in Florida, they are now legally allowed to process real estate transactions using Bitcoin. So if this does not get you excited for the future and the adoption of Bitcoin, I don't know what will. In other news, I'm becoming mildly excited and mildly concerned at the same time with regards to Tether, the USDT stablecoin. I'll explain a couple of things. Okay, this has been on my mind for a while and I, for some reason, just keep forgetting to bring it up. But here it is. First of all, there's the good news. The good news is, according to Tether's recent audit and their reported holdings, you can see that Tether has started to accumulate Bitcoin. So at face value, this is very bullish. Tether is sitting on, as you can see, an absolute monster amount of dollar value in assets. And if it was to convert all of this into Bitcoin, then that would, of course, push the price of Bitcoin up. Now, where this starts to get a little bit concerning for me is in two places. First of all, they can't really win. OK, and the reason I say that is for years, they have been accused of being some sort of scam company. For years, they've been accused of artificially inflating or propping up the Bitcoin price by minting their coins, the USDT stablecoin, and using it to prop up the market. They've, they've been alleged to have been doing this. They've been alleged to have been manipulating the price of Bitcoin using their stablecoin. And for a long time, they actually didn't hold much Bitcoin, right? And so now they've started to acquire Bitcoin. They, they're in this lose-lose situation because if they start to buy a whole heap of Bitcoin, then people will say, wow, Tether just props the market up. They artificially manipulate the price of Bitcoin. There's no actual spot demand. It's all just Tether printing money out of thin air and using it to support the Bitcoin price. Versus of late, they've been shown to hold more gold than Bitcoin. And this has led a lot of people to say, well, they clearly aren't very bullish on Bitcoin. They clearly don't care about Bitcoin since they hold more gold than they do Bitcoin. So Tether really can't win in this situation. But I think what's important to point out here is the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room for Tether is that for a very long time as well, we need to give context on this. For a very long time, there has been Tether FUD. Tether's unbacked. Tether's going to blow up. It's going to bring the whole cryptocurrency industry down when it collapses and all of this. I've made several videos over the last year and I've been very consistent in telling you that I personally do not see Tether as a risk. I do not see them as a scam company. I see them as having a very profitable business model where all they have to do is take customer money, invest it in short term yields like treasury bills, collect the yield and then be ready to give you back your USD when you want to redeem your stablecoin for it. But the elephant in the room here is you can see their exposure to short term US treasury bills sits at over $53 billion. For the first time ever, the biggest risk to Tether is that the US government could default on their debt next month. And if they do, if they do, then they will not be honoring the yield, nor will they be able to redeem this ginormous amount of $53 billion worth of T-bills that they hold. So the irony here is that the risk all along was never really that Tether was operating in a malicious or corrupt type of manner. It was in fact that they were holding what was supposed to be risk-free rate. And of course, there is a good chance, according to some at least, that we will see a default next month. I'm personally not in that camp of people that think we will see a default, but the risk here is higher in the short term than it has ever been for Tether. One last point to make here, even if Tether blows up, the amount of damage this would do in the short term is likely nothing more than a V-shaped recovery. We would, of course, see a plunge. We would, of course, see a crash as people panic sell. But I do believe it would be a swift V-shaped recovery. 
total amount of Tether, its market cap down here around 81 billion. That's a large sum of money. But when you compare this to the $531 billion Bitcoin market cap, this equates to Tether only being around 15% of the market cap of Bitcoin. So would we see a pullback? Yes. Would it destroy the cryptocurrency industry? No. Would it kill Bitcoin? Absolutely not. Lastly, before I move on from here, I do wonder, since they're increasing their Bitcoin stack, are they, of course, aware of this impending risk of holding the short-term T-bills? Because if it was me, I would be. I would be thinking, time to convert a lot of this into something more like precious metals or Bitcoin. I would be thinking, I don't want to take any default risk here coming into next month. And therefore, I would be thinking about exiting my T-bills into precious metals and Bitcoin. Of course, if you're going to start to exit $53 billion into precious metals and Bitcoin, expect the price of Bitcoin at least to pump in the short term. Over in traditional finance, 78% of the S&P companies have beaten the earnings per share estimate to date for Q1. So the context here is this is above the five-year average of 77% and above the 10-year average of 73%. So this year, earnings per share are significantly better than both the five and 10 year average. This is bullish. In fact, it's so bullish that we have now flipped year over year growth rate back into positive territory for the first time since Q1 of 2022. Again, this is bullish. It tells us to be keeping an open mind about better than expected outcomes walking forward. The good news is if the market crashes, small speculators, retail are going to make a killing. But the bad news is, well, I'll let you figure that out on your own. Of course, we know the bad news on this channel. The more retail postures bearish, the more bullish the camel crew gets. I do not want to be in a crowded trade. I do not want to be betting on downside when short positions are this lopsided. Would you rather be short now with the herd or would you rather be posturing long with the camel crew? And so hopping into the charts, I think this is the final leg up before that final rollover down into the mid 90s for the dollar. I don't know where this is going to roll over, whether it's going to roll over here or all the way into this yellow trend line support and then roll over. But I do still expect this to make it down to the mid 90s. All right, so things start to get very interesting as we move into this Bitcoin price chart. So you can see we are essentially repeating what happened at the last 60 day cycle. We had this flush of sentiment, we had a swing, and then we broke out of this downtrend in the red line. And that marked the entry for the long position with a stop around the cycle low for Bitcoin. Since then, we have ridden this position and now it should in theory be a rinse and repeat cycle. If I grab the bottom of this cycle here and measure it out to the swing low that we've just had most recently, day 63, perfectly inside the timing window for Bitcoin to make a cycle low. If we zoom in on the price action, you can see we've got a strong wick that just about front run this 25K level, which of course was the range breakout here. Undeniably, this yellow line marks a range breakout. We have broken out, back tested, although we have front run it slightly. And since then, as you can see, just how before when we had the swing, we drew a trend line and we used that as well to confirm that we were indeed in a new cycle. We currently have the same rinse and repeat pattern, don't we? We've got the swing right in the timing band for the cycle. We seem to be pushing away from this with strength here and we have a red trend line break. So I'm looking to get long today for Bitcoin. I'll likely add Ethereum here as well. So the long will look something like this with a stop below this low here. And for the crypto related equities, as I've been talking about over and over again, we've already got Coinbase. Given Bitcoin's price action, it's reasonable to expect this to push off today in today's session. I think MicroStrategy as well will likely mark a swing low here. So that means we could probably add to longs on this swing and put the stop below here. Patience has clearly paid off here for Riot, as you can see. We didn't chase this top, the top of this market here. Instead, we waited for this pullback to come right into support, double support, as you can see, one from this downward slope and blue resistance line, one from this local high back here, which has also been support once, twice, three, four times so far. So relative strength here as well. I was talking about relative strength for, for Riot because we did not undercut all of these lows. Whilst Bitcoin was making new lows, Riot held up. And I said, I wonder if Riot knew something. And apparently it did. Apparently it knew Bitcoin was about to find its cycle low and move higher. So if we can get any kind of bullish price action out of here today, I think we can add here with a stop below these local lows, give the market a few days space, and then we can look to move the stop from the initial position up higher to lock in some profit and allow the profit from the first trade to finance the risk for the second trade. And it's the exact same deal for Marathon, isn't it? It's the exact same deal right here. Again, equal lows for Marathon's price whilst Bitcoin made lower lows. So this is indicative of relative strength here. 
and likely today I would expect us to get a pop up and then we can start to add to positions and move stops up as per the other positions as well. So overall, things look very good here. I'm happy with what I'm seeing so far. I don't want to go rushing in here because we played we played patient so well, but I do think we've got a nice candidate here. I do think this is likely going to be it. Sometimes it takes two stabs. It's worth pointing that out. In fact, I think back here, I got in on a swing. I think I got in round here or it might have even been here and then got stopped out for a very small pro uh, loss soon after. Then once we came down here, I had a second stab at it and you can see that that trade worked really well. So sometimes it takes two stabs. The key is if we get long here and then the price rolls over and stops us out, the key is just not to get emotional, not to cry about it, not to revenge trade, not to start upping your position size on the second attempt, not to get worn out by the market. You know, if this works, great. If it works first time, that's great. But if I get long today and then I get stopped out, the important thing to do is to just say, sometimes that happens and then we'll get long again and go again. And we know that if we get stopped out once, then the second time we're almost certainly going to be right. So happy days. So far, I think we've got a cycle. I doubt we'll get stopped. I think we'll be able to put the long on today and move the stops up. And in theory, we should be working our way up to a new 60 day cycle, which is now due around the 11th of July. So as ever, one day at a time, but things look super constructive as far as I can tell. Here is the FTSE 100 working on its first repair, isn't it? So I, you can see by my green squiggle that I didn't really want to play the aggressive position, which would be to take the long from here with a stop below this low. But I said, if we can get above the yellow one, then that's a much higher probability setup. And I'll be happy to take that trade targeting the top of this upwards open red resistance line up here. So can we obey this green squiggle of mine? Can we do something like that? If so, I think we could put a long on for the FTSE 100. So expect me to tell you that's going to happen over the next couple of days. IPX as well. We'll check in with that since that is a UK stock. And as you can see, continues to grind its way up here. So long and strong continue to push and we'll see what the market can give. So I wish you the best of weeks. Hope you're doing well in life and I hope you had a lovely weekend. In the meantime, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.